What's up, guys? We have a very special one for you today. <laughs> no, not, not this special one. Today we are going to do an underwater shoot, and that's because we're going to recreate the opening shot of the series Altered Carbon. One of the main themes in this show is that humans have figured out a way to change their bodies, or what they call sleeves. What I like about this shot is that it represents the idea of rebirth by having the protagonist floating in this liquid with a cord attached to him, in a very similar way to how we would have a baby in the womb with an umbilical cord. The breakdown for this shot is quite simple. We have a person floating in the water with a strong light coming from above them, and then there's a cord floating right next to them. I have done a few underwater shoots before, and so I had somewhat of an idea of how I was going to approach this, but I knew that it was going to be difficult. Let us take a look at how it went. The location for this shot was a scuba diving training center where I had filmed before. I thought this location was good because we could achieve the depth that we needed to get the shot, as the lowest point of the pool is six meters from the surface. For the camera, we used the Sony a6500 with a Seafrog's water housing a place to weight on top of the housing to make it easier for the camera to sink. This is a technique that I have learned from previous shoots, and it's not perfect, but it works. Our key was a Forza 500 with a Fresnel attachment that we rigged to a Kupo stand with a boom arm. The pool we were shooting at had this giant glass window, and so I placed a Forza 500 and a Forza 300 just outside of that on standby in case I needed to bring the light levels up inside the pool. But once I was in there, I realized that it was too bright, and so I cut those lights off. Killed it. But it was still looking a little bit too bright, so we brought the barn doors and placed those on the Fresnel attachment so that we could direct the light a little bit more and control the spill off the walls. Then we slightly adjusted the position of the light, and then I called our talent inside the pool. He used a piece of string and tied it to a weight and placed it outside of the frame to recreate the cord from the original shot. You need to be very steady to prevent the camera from shaking. I feel I get the best results when I can find a surface for me to stand or sit on. And when that's not possible, I try to frame my shot first and then gently let myself float in the water. But this method can be a little bit challenging, especially when you're filming a subject that is above you. Because the bubbles that come out of your regulator not only shake your camera, but also go up directly into the shot. So while trying to capture this shot, I held my breath a few times to avoid that. Shooting underwater is always challenging because communication is super difficult. Luckily, the large glass window that we had allowed our producer Lucia to quickly review the shots without me having to constantly go up and down. And if you scuba dive, you know how important this is because you have to go up really slowly to let your lungs adapt to the pressure. Anyways. Let's take a look at our final result. It would have been great if we had a larger pool and a higher ceiling so that we didn't see as much of the location in the shot. However, I still liked the way that it turned out and the shafts of light in the water added a nice little touch. If you have any questions about what filming in the water is like, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. And here goes the mandatory, subscribe to the channel, leave us a like, and once again, may the Forza be with you.